There are some new developments today in the sad case of a 13-year-old girl who was declared brain dead after tonsil surgery. Jahai McMath's family has taken her out of a California hospital. That happened last night. They are moving her to an undisclosed location. Their attorney says that while the family is grateful for the judge's decision, Jahai still has a long way to go. I will say that it, uh, it's a much more difficult time than it would have been had children's found it in its heart to give her a feeding tube and a breathing tube. As a result, Jahai's fragile. So while we're happy that she's out, she's not out of the woods in terms of just her own health, uh, because right now she is in transit. So where is she going? Allison Scary is the founder of New Beginnings, a long-term care facility in Long Island, New York. Her facility has offered to care for Jahai. We have no confirmation that she will go there. Uh, but Allison, you know a lot about this case, and you say that you were instrumental in extending her life this, to this point. Well, the team that I've been working with, um, you know, we put an affidavit into the court yeah. saying that I was willing to help Jahai in any way we could. So um, she got the extra eight days, and we're so happy to see that she's going to have a chance now. Have you, know? you communicated with the family today on this? Uh, no, I haven't. All right, so you, you don't know where she is at this, at this point? I can't speak about that. Okay, so, so you come to this from a very personal place. You got into this line of work because your father was in a similar situation, right? Very similar, and, and this is bringing back so many different issues and memories. But basically, he was on full life support and he was in a coma and at one point they had talked about taking him off he would have no quality of life and um, we just kept fought we believed that he was in there and he did come out of his coma but it takes time and he's doing well now he's doing great so you believe that Jahai could recover even though several doctors have declared her brain dead and in fact they had a coroner remove her from the hospital yes yes because I have witnessed firsthand I work with so many families I've been doing this for six years. People that were declared brain dead that are actually walking and talking years later. It's just, you know, it's the time and place we need to be educated and know that they're, because of the war especially, with all the veterans returning from brain injuries, that we have to believe in recovery and we have to give every opportunity to, how will we know if we don't, if we right, pull so plugs? So what, what would you, if she came to your facility, she would, she would have a feeding tube? Yes. And what would you do to try to rehabilitate her? Well, rehabilitation comes in many forms. You need to keep the body moving, physical therapy, you need to keep the blood flowing. You need um, uh, speech therapy, even though you're not speaking, because a lot of times you're in there and you just need to come out. And um, occupational, hyperbaric oxygen we have. You know, and we also treat at, families. At too. what point in your facility, I mean, you know, do, how do decisions get made at that point? If there, you know, God forbid, if there isn't the kind of, of turnaround that you're, that you're discussing. Yeah. Uh, one day at a time, you know, everybody's unique and individual. Everybody's recovery is totally different. So you just need to take it one step at a time and just give that chance. Because without that, what do you have? All right. So you don't at this point, you know, are there are there many facilities that she could be going to or when when do you think you'll know whether or not you'll be taking care of her? I think I'll actually know a lot more in, in this morning. Yeah, um, we do get updated like hourly and we've been working around the clock for three weeks. Uh, the team I work with, Angelo Clemente and Bobby Schindler, and um, we're going to continue working as a team to help many other people. And what about the expense of paying for her care? Yeah. Um, we raise money. We have hardship funds. We have our website. We, we just do whatever it takes. We've never turned one family away since we opened our doors. I'm very proud of that. All right. Allison, thank you very much. Allison Scary uh, with us today. And you've had your own, you have a picture of your dad yeah. oh. um, when he was in his coma. And is he, what, what's his condition now? Well, actually, he called me because he saw the news. Yeah. I was so busy, I forgot to update him. He's in Montana. And he called me and he said, and here's my dad with a brain injury, who was like this. He encouraged me. He goes, just keep doing what you believe in, your faith. Your... He's so proud. So that kind of like tells it all for Quite me. Quite a story. It sure does. Yeah. Allison, thank you very thank much. You so much. Uh, and we'll see where it goes from here for this okay. beautiful little girl thank you. Uh, and what her future has in store. Thank you, Allison. Thank you.